It's October 17th, 2017. The Cleveland Cavaliers are taking on the Boston Celtics in the season opener. But this is far from a regular game. You see, these teams look very different from the previous year. And that's thanks to this man, Kyrie Irving. After failing to defend their NBA championship against the Warriors the previous year, Kyrie shocked the NBA world and demanded a trade from Cleveland, breaking off from fellow superstar LeBron James to get out of his shadow and carve his own path. So the Cavs made a blockbuster deal with the Celtics to send Kyrie to Boston, teaming up with some future stars, a savvy vet, and this guy, rising star Gordon Hayward. Hayward had just come off the best season of his career, making his first All-Star game with an impressive stat line. And that offseason, he signed a four-year max deal to pair up with Irving, ready to establish himself as the number two guy on a championship team. The hype surrounding this roster was enormous, and the expectations were even bigger. And Gordon Hayward was the X-Factor, looking to set the tone as the league's newest star with a big win against the best team in the conference. But that's not what happened. Get the biggest shot in Cavs history. They're going up. Oh my goodness. Hayward came down so hard. Oh, okay. Hayward broke his leg. Hayward has broken his leg. Hayward has broken his leg. And that is how quickly a season can change. Gordon Hayward's career has been filled with heartbreaks and what-ifs right from the start, even dating back to his college days. Born in Indiana, Hayward wasn't your typical basketball prodigy. In fact, while he did grow up playing basketball, he was a much better tennis player, competing at the state championships as a freshman and a sophomore in high school. But a growth spurt to six foot seven in his senior year convinced him to pursue basketball more seriously. He'd average 18 points and eight rebounds in his final season, leading his school to a state championship, where he'd score the game-winning layup at the buzzer. But not many eyes were on Hayward heading into college. He was an unranked three-star prospect, and despite some late interest from Purdue and Michigan, Hayward accepted a scholarship to play at little-known Butler University. The Bulldogs were a solid tier two team, finding success in the late 90s and early 2000s. But they didn't start making waves on the big stage until hiring the youngest coach in college history, Brad Stevens. In Stevens' first year in 2008, he led the Bulldogs to a 30-4 record, including a conference title and a second round appearance in the NCAA tournament. Hayward would join the Bulldogs the following season and became the team's main offensive weapon he averaged 13 and six as a rookie and led the team to a solid 26 and six record. Unfortunately, Butler lost both the conference title game and the first round of the NCAA tournament with Hayward putting up just seven and 12 points in both games. But despite losing three starters the next season, Butler and Hayward got even better. He averaged nearly 16 points and eight rebounds and was named the Horizon League Player of the Year. The team dominated the conference tournament and went into March Madness as the fifth seed in the West. After a dominant win against UTEP in the first round, Hayward came up huge in round two, stealing the ball in the dying seconds of the game to seal a two-point victory. Caught by Hayward, and it's over! Oh my goodness! They'd upset first seed Syracuse in the next round to make it to their first Elite Eight in school history, and then held off the number two seed Kansas State to advance to the Final Four. Gordon Hayward led the way in scoring in both games with 17 and 22 points, and then put up 19 points and a great defensive stop against Michigan State to win by two, leading Butler to their first finals, which took place in his home state of Indiana. Hayward and the Bulldogs faced Duke in the finals, the best team in the country and heavy favorites going into the tournament. But Butler kept it close and used their suffocating defense to force turnovers and stay within striking distance. Down by one with just 13 seconds left, Hayward got the ball at the top of the key and drove hard to his right. He stepped back and fired a higher king shot into the air, 
but missed long and forced his team to foul with no timeouts and just four seconds left. After Brian Zubek made the first free throw, he was told to miss on purpose by Duke's head coach, which he did, giving Hayward the ball with just seconds to get a shot up. He dashed up the right side of the court and put up a half-court heave to give his team a chance to win. At midcourt, launches the shot. Oh, and almost went in! The ball barely rimmed out, giving Duke their fourth NCAA title. I missed the shot, so that's what happened. Hayward impressed throughout the tournament, increasing his stock a lot, heading into the 2010 NBA Draft. Gordon Hayward was selected ninth overall by the Utah Jazz in a relatively forgettable draft class, with a few notable exceptions. But Hayward's professional career didn't start out too well. He joined a Jazz team with an already established roster, making the playoffs four straight years with young stars in Darren Williams and Paul Millsap, as well as solid vets in Al Jefferson and Andre Kirilenko. Hayward only averaged five points and two rebounds on very limited minutes, but found himself in a fortunate situation going into his second year. The Jazz had a very disappointing 2011 campaign, finishing 11th in the West with a sub-500 record, so major changes were made to the roster, with Darren Williams leaving for the Nets and Kirilenko opting to play a year in Europe. These changes made room for Hayward to shine, as he earned a spot on the team's starting five. He doubled his playtime and put up some solid stats in his sophomore year, making the Rising Stars team and appearing in the playoffs for the first time, where he'd get swept by the Spurs in the first round. Hayward transitioned to a sixth man the following season, but continued to improve his game, especially from beyond the arc, where he'd shoot 41% on three and a half attempts per game. But after a few middling seasons in a row, the Jazz dumped the rest of their old core and gave Hayward the keys to lead the new young roster. Gordon Hayward became the Jazz's main offensive threat, averaging a career high in points, rebounds, and assists. Although the team struggled record-wise, the future looked bright, especially after drafting Rudy Gobert 27th overall in 2013. By 2016, Hayward and Gobert had developed into an eccentric duo with the former spearheading the offense and the latter getting big time stops on defense. Hayward averaged nearly 22 points and five rebounds and was selected to his first ever All-Star game. He led the Jazz to the fourth seed and their first postseason appearance in four years. In the first round against the Clippers, Hayward increased his production to 24 points and seven rebounds, including a 40 point performance in game three and a 26-point night in Game 7 to close out the series. Hayward would get swept by the Warriors in the next round, but proved he could perform on the big stage, and increased his value tremendously going into a contract year. In the offseason, Hayward signed a four-year max contract with the Boston Celtics, reuniting with his Butler coach Brad Stevens. Hayward joined forces with Kyrie Irving, two future stars in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and solid pros like Al Horford, Marcus Smart, Terry Rozier, and Marcus Morris. This team had a deep and talented roster and looked to be one of the favorites to come out of the East. Their first game of the season was in Cleveland against the Cavaliers, a marquee matchup that was a prelude to a potential playoff meeting. Hayward started off well in the first quarter, fading away at mid-range and knocking down his first shot of the game. But on a routine set play halfway through the first, disaster struck. The biggest shot in Cavs history. They're going up. Oh my goodness. Hayward came down so hard. Oh, Hayward broke his leg. Hayward has broken his leg. Hayward has broken his leg. Hayward went up for an alley-oop attempt, but collided with LeBron James in midair. His upper body was pushed backwards and his left leg got caught underneath him as he fell down on top of it. It was a gruesome injury that sent shockwaves through the entire arena. The clip of Hayward staring at his leg in despair with his foot the wrong way now lives in infamy as one of the most devastating sports moments caught on camera. Many Cavaliers players turned away in horror after seeing the injury, and his Celtics teammates were in total shock. In his Celtics debut on the first game of the season, 
Gordon Hayward broke his tibia and dislocated his ankle, putting him out for the entire year. Hayward opened up about his experience with the injury in an interview a few weeks later, sharing the emotional trauma both he and his family suffered from the accident. As a parent, you don't want, you don't want your child to go through that. And as a parent myself, it's like thinking I would rather take their pain. So, I, you know, and this is where it makes me emotional because, and I remember seeing my mom and it was, she's crying. And, like that's just tough. It's tough, tough to see your parents cry too, because then, you know, it makes you emotional. And... After experiencing such a devastating blow to his future and his career, Gordon Hayward vowed to return stronger and better than ever the next season. Very few athletes are able to make a full recovery after a serious injury, whether it's a leg break or an Achilles tear. And sadly for Hayward, he was not one of those lucky few. Although the 2017 campaign seemed doomed for the Celtics, they outperformed their expectations tremendously. They reached the Eastern Conference Finals, forcing a Game 7 with LeBron and the Cavs without both Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving. So once both players returned from injury, expectations were higher than ever, but they would quickly come crashing down. While Hayward managed to play 72 games in the 2019 season, it was clear he was no longer the same player, only averaging 12 points per game coming off the bench. Inner turmoil and big personalities within the team caused a lot of internal issues with the Celtics roster, and their performance suffered. They finished fourth in the Eastern Conference and bowed out to the Milwaukee Bucks in five games in the second round of the playoffs. That offseason, Kyrie Irving made the shock decision to sign with the Brooklyn Nets even after promising Celtics fans that he would stay with the team a year prior. You guys will have me back. I plan on re-signing here next year. Boom! So. Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now! Stop the cap! This power vacuum should have been the chance for Hayward to reassume a bigger role on offense. But he was sidelined in favor of Tatum and Brown and became more of a third option on the team. Hayward averaged 17 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists in the 2020 season, but his play style and mindset had changed. He was much less aggressive and commanding than he was in Utah. And as a final nail in the coffin, Hayward broke his hand on the 53rd game of the season after colliding with a screen against the Spurs. He missed the entirety of the playoffs in the bubble, and then opted not to re-sign with the Celtics the following year, instead joining the Charlotte Hornets on a four-year deal. And while the Hornets did look promising for a time, with young stars in LaMelo Ball and Terry Rozier to help Hayward on offense, the team never seemed to put it together. Hayward was plagued by injuries the next few seasons, never averaging more than 50 games any year in Charlotte. Although his points per game averages were solid, he wasn't playing meaningful basketball anymore, and his play was not improving. In fact, it was slowly getting worse. After being dealt to the Thunder at the 2024 trade deadline, Hayward played just 25 more games on heavily reduced minutes, averaging a measly 5 points and 3 rebounds. And just this past week, Hayward officially announced his retirement from basketball. And while the news isn't all that surprising, it's truly disappointing to see what became of such a promising young player. From his infamous half-court miss against Duke, to his breakout season with the Jazz. Gordon Hayward will go down as one of the biggest what-ifs in the game of basketball. Had he not been injured, maybe the Celtics would have had enough firepower to overwhelm the Cavs and make it to the NBA Finals. Hayward could have developed into a deadly wing player on the level of Paul George or Jimmy Butler. Who knows how many rings Boston would have now if he stayed healthy. But unfortunately in sports, Sometimes it only takes a moment for everything to change. And right here, on the season opener of the 2017 season, is the moment that Gordon Hayward's life changed forever. <laughs>